One of the great paradoxes of Earth history is the near absence of ancient rocky seashore. Ancient erosion surfaces, called unconformities, intrigue us with their flatness. In Rocheblanc Quarry in Normandy, France, the Paleozoic rock were folded and then eroded very flat. During the Jurassic period, the sea invaded this flat relief to depose new sediments. Modern nature teaches us that normal erosion and alteration always generate jagged surface by a process named differential erosions. Even powerful waves accentuate the serrated aspect of the rocks through differential or preferential erosions. Indeed, some strata are less resistant than others to alteration or abrasions. Any sort of landscape, whatever its type of rocks, will always erode differentially. Unconformities are supposed to record ancient rocky landscapes and rocky seashores. So why many unconformities in the world are quite flat and depleted of differential erosion? But here the smoking gun. Many unconformities bear the signature of the powerful abrasion of debris flows. The study of modern catastrophes helps to understand the erosional process of debris flows and water vortices. To explain these flat unconformities, William Davis proposed the pineplanation theory. For him, any stable continent flattens into a pineplane under the prolonged effect of erosions. Some propose that a major transgression could sweep the surface into a marine planation. However, these two models are not able to account for these ancient flat unconformities. For two billion years, from the Precambrian to the Cretaceous period, the planet did not preserve too many rocky seashores or real landscape. Rocky seashores became more common in the Cenozoic, the Tertiary period. In Paleozoic times, unconformities are mostly planation surfaces, which are not real landscapes. Rocky landscapes start to be barely common in the Mesozoic time. Here's a list of the world's rocky seashores preserved before the tertiary time. Four sites, not too many as you see. Hurt studies tell us that rocky seashores are more likely to be preserved than continental landscapes. To explain the reason, let's use a theoretical continent with a stretch vertical scale. During a marine transgression, the waves sculpt new platforms top with shingles beaches. Diffraction and refraction of waves accentuate headlands and bays. Existing landforms are modified into a series of submerged terraces. Even a perfectly gradual transgression would produce a series of terraces. Since the last glaciation, melting ice has caused a global marine transgression submerging many series of wave-cut platforms on all continental margins. Rocky seashores are more likely to be preserved during a transgression of the sea when new marine sediments embed the coastline. In other words, rocky seashore would be fossilized along unconformities. During a regression, continental erosion would expose a nonconformity and the sediments topping the ancient coastline. Geologists' job is to survey outcrops to interpret hurt history. How our hurt history models are drawn from the study of processes happening on Earth today. So why the Earth has poorly recorded ancient rocky seashores but mostly flat unconformity? Here is the common explanation. When a stable continent is exposed to the deep weathering of a long period of regressions, its surface turns into a vast peneplain destroying all the ancient rocky seashores. The reality is that continents were not stable throughout the geological era. 
basin were subsiding in the middle of the continents, even far from mountain formation. Throughout many geological periods, basins were sagging and filled with sediments. In some place, the crust was arching. Sediments record many transgressions and regressions. Rocky seashores should be embed along unconformities. Planation erosion may wipe out many existing reliefs and rocky seashores, but erosion stops at what we call the baseline, which is about the sea level. Rocky seashores should have been preserved embedded under sediments as an unconformity, but they are missing. To wipe out all the recorded rocky seashores, peneplanation would need to level down all basins reaching the base of the continental crust. Basin subsidence and sea fluctuation should have drowned and embed some rocky seashores, regardless of the alleged slow peneplanation. Basins lagged for long geological periods, and the theory of their thermal evolution is a challenge for modern geologists. Although these basins were sagging and hiding their strata, they were well exposed following the great mid-tertiary uplift. Each basin has its specific record of geological periods. Around the world, they were all lifted and synchronized in the mid-tertiary time along with all mountain chains, regardless of their age. Today, no basin is sagging except the North Sea in Europe. By the way, active grabbins like the African Rift are not sag basins. Also, how can flow lines of the paleocurrents cross some of these basins during their subsidence? Famous geologists remind us that we find no reason why these basins had to be filled up with sediments in the first place. Orogeny, or mountain chain formation, produce also basins. Most of the coal formations of the Carboniferous in the world are deposited in such basins. West of the Appalachian Mountains, the Carboniferous Appalachian Basin can reach 12 km deep. This trout is 2,000 km long and 5 km at its largest. Here is a simplified animation of the Variscan orogeny, Hercynian chain, over France. From Silurian to Permian, folding and trusting build many basins that trapped the Carboniferous sediments. The common sense of uniformitarianism requests that differential erosion and weathering would be at work during the folding, along with periods of erosion during regression and sedimentation periods of the transgression. Before the great transgression of the Jurassic, the Hercynian chain was completely leveled flat down. In that respect, we will look later at three very flat on conformities of the Hercynian chain, embedding granite, limestone, and classic sedimentary rocks. Back to the Appalachian area. Again, uniformitarianism should expect normal differential erosion during the folding of the mountain chain. Like all other mountain chains in the world, the Appalachian was flattened down to its base level before its lift top in the middle tertiary time. To resume, uniformitarianism predicts that all three types of basins should have recorded rocky seashores. Around the world, none of these basins has ever recorded such reliefs. So, uniformitarianism is creating a paradox. You might say Davis was right, we do see major peneplanation in Hurt history. But the great mid-tertiary uplift is a real issue. All mountain chains surge up altogether from their planation at the sea level. 
After their orogenic deformation, the Tibetan plateau and its Himalayas surge from their planated relief. Here is a geological map of France. The young mountain chains, like the Pyrenees and the Alps, the Massif Central and the Massif Armoricain of the old Hercynian chain, and the Paris Basin. These terrains were all leveled down near the sea level until the great tertiary uplift with this incredible synchronization. The tertiary Paris Basin was also uplift, producing cuestas dissected by erosion, also synchronized with the Ardennes and Vosges uplift. World basins of all ages were also uplift in the mid tertiary. Imagine if flatlands exist long before the great late Miocene uplift. A warm climate world with no obstacles would be perfect for the radiation and biodiversity of mammals on Earth. At the same time, many continental stable margins around the world began their uplift from a flat relief. Some peneplains rose very fast because canyons start to dissect these plateaus after their uplift. In his famous book, The Origin of Mountains, Cliff Holder compiled a century of publications on this universal uplift. So far, no earth scientist has debunked his conclusion. He exposed our misconception that tectonics build up mountains in balance with cross buoyancy, isostasy, and their erosion. The reality is that the thickening of the crust by folds and trusting happens quite deep at the baseline or sea level with no regard to the isostasy natural law. After its peneplanation at sea level, the mountain chain uplift vertically and then erosion start to sculpt peaks and summits. A hundred years ago, geologists were baffled to find on the roof of the Alps relics of this peneplanation, even depleted of differential erosion. Now let's do an inventory of the landscape we see today that are missing in ancient unconformities. Limestone bedrock transform into small or giant limestone pavements. Meteoric dissolutions of fractures form karst cave with their underground hydrography. Rivers cut canyons into plateaus. No canyons are found along unconformities, nor is there any altered fault wall with scree of altered blocks. The old mesas or cuestas are not there either. More resistant rocks, such as granite masses or volcanic chimneys, should have been preserved as inselbergs or monadnocks. All volcanic islands and volcanic shores produce typical dark sand beaches. Somehow they were completely wiped out from the geological record. It's hard to believe that all these topographies are missing along unconformities.